It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theron and Mary Jo Foley are here. Who better to explain what happened when Microsoft acquired Nokia? And we'll talk about the prospects for Stephen Elop to become the next CEO at Microsoft. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 327, recorded September 5th, 2013. Nokisoft. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 20% off, visit squarespace.com and don't forget to use the offer code Windows9. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show all about Nokia and its various branches and sub-branches and uh, divisions and subsidiaries. Paul Therat is here from the super site for Nokia. That's uh, nokiasupersite.com. Mary Jo Foley from all about Microsoft, Nokia.com. Just being silly. Hey, guys, how are you? Good to see you. Crazy week. Yeah. You think? The stories just <laughs> keep on coming. Well, it's funny. Leo, I spent Tuesday in a fatal position on the floor, just rolling around and tumbling. <laughs> he did, actually. We, we've been talking about this as a possibility for years. and I know, but pretty that's much like said, saying, pretty much concluded maybe I'll was... have some horrible disease and die someday, and then it happens. Is it it's really still kind of shocking. Is it's it like, that bad? No, but, no. you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain how something that we expected to happen, that we sort of predicted would happen... How different it is when it happens. Here's, okay, uh, from Business Insider, this is what, to me, made the most coherent sense. And I'd love for you guys to explain. I can't believe you're reading from Business Insider. I know. I, maybe, it was business week. Continue. maybe it was Business Week. Maybe it was Business Week. Anyway, it was Yikes. three reasons why Microsoft bought Nokia. One okay. is the Microsoft-Nokia partnership ended in 2014. And, of course, there's reason to think perhaps Nokia, struggling as it was, might either abandoned the business entirely, or turned to Android for its next version of phone. That's so, just, that's well, that's one possible. Speculate, yep. rank yep. speculation. I believe that's correct. The timing Oh, right. Is oh, no, no, it's true. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Oh, obviously, true. that's true. Okay. <laughs> number two. It is true, though. But no, number okay, we'll two. Number two. <laughs> number two. Stephen Elop, who is mm -hmm. a former Microsoft, he now CEO at uh, Nokia, Mm -hmm. um, did turn, did one could argue, do a great job at least starting to turn that company around, despite the fact that it's about to go out of business. And no, he did would a great be, job. yeah, I mean, he did a good job. He, he, he kind of nursed it back to life. Listen, anyway. when the plane is hurtling toward the earth and yeah. someone handles, hands you the steering wheel, I mean, yeah. And you, you know. could argue even before this might have been a front runner for Microsoft CEO. Now it looks like an Apple next move. You get the, the company and, oh, look, <laughs> what comes along for the ride? Mr. Elop. So that's two. And then the yeah. third and the thing that put me over the top why this made sense is mm -hmm. Microsoft's not using U.S. dollars. They're using right. overseas money that they would, if they brought back into the U.S. for Yep. Stock buyback or dividend would have to yep. pay 35%. So it's not going to impact shareholders. Share. It doesn't impact shareholders. It's almost free money from that point of view. That's correct. It is free money. In <laughs> fact, if they paid extra, it'd be like they were making money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> pay more. They got two if and they, a half billion you know, dollars. If they bought BlackBerry with money like that, maybe, uh, you right. know, it'd be like the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> two and a half billion dollars in patents they may, may well have needed. We don't know what the strategic value of those is. Plus, mm. only a mere five billion. Uh, for Actually, Nokia. let me let me make a comparison that I think might be kind of interesting for people. Um, last year, Google closed a deal to buy Motorola Mobility for what twelve twelve billion? and a half billion dollars. Twelve and a half billion, and and I think we all know that the reason they bought them was for that patent portfolio, which let's face it is not exactly working out very well for them right now. Um, Microsoft is getting a company that has probably the most well-regarded and respected and legitimate patent portfolio is with regards to mobile technologies in the world for half that, a little and, more than that. And I don't think you can for, you can ignore the fact that they uh, are not only the best Windows phone maker, they're pretty much the only Windows phone maker. They, they make 80%, yeah. right? 
Yeah, right. and 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 I, of course they will make a hundred percent once this deal closes because if you're Sam, <laughs> if you're Samsung, also or HTC, rank speculation. Yeah, you think on that, yeah. <laughs> so does what? Now I don't know where I read that. I I'll find the the quote. But that seemed to me those three arguments seemed to me pretty uh, compelling argument. I think you go to the board with that. The board's going to say, yeah, I think we should acquire Nokia. I think the way Mary Jo and I said this earlier in the week, because we did some you special. You were on there special. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was that it, certainly this deal was born of necessity that I, I'm not sure that we'll ever know the full story, but clearly situations converged where this kind of hap had to happen now. Yeah. Something that might not have made sense a year ago. Yep. Or uh, in June. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. something some that reason. makes a lot more sense with Balmer stepping down, Elop sitting there in the wings, um, a company that is looking at the end of its Microsoft licensing in a few short months. All of that makes sense. And then you're not even spending real money. You're spending Euro dollars. <laughs> it's like funny money. It's like Euro <laughs> Disney. It's, it's, it looks like real Disney, but it's not. Yeah, we bring it back our Euros from our vacation and we just roll them into the toilet paper roll because you they're know. colorful. Yeah. No, I just yeah, it all makes kind of all makes kind of sense, frankly. It does. You know, on the Android part, that's that's the part a lot of people are kind of iffy about. Like, would Nokia ever go Android, or was that I? What I would bet, based on some of the new stories that are out today in the New York Times and All Things D, I would bet um, Nokia probably used that as a threat, right? And they said, "Hey, you guys, we might go Android when our contract is up with you in 2014." It wasn't like really like, "Hey, we're ready to go Android." That's my take. That it was more like, "Hey, let's throw that out there and see if that gets you guys to the bargaining table with us." It's a credible and, threat, though. When I look yeah. at the 1020, and I think, "Gosh, if they put Android yeah. in that, I'd buy that phone in a heartbeat." See, I had the opposite reaction, but I, <laughs> but I understand why people say that, and I know. And and by the way, it's fair to say. In fact, I kind of wonder why no one has done this. Uh, and we might have talked about this earlier in the week, this notion that, you know, an HTC or a Nokia or whoever uh, would release the same phone, but here's a version for Windows Phone, here's a version for Android. Um, well, kind I, of I, that's what uh, both Samsung same and hardware. HTC were taking an warmed over Android hardware and putting Windows Phone on. Well, rather than the warmed over thing. In other words, like if, when you look at something like an HTC One X or whatever that more recent phone is, there, there was there have been rumors and it may still happen that some version of that would come out for Windows Phone this fall, you know, a quad-core processor, whatever. Um, but when HTC does something like that, the phone they release will look different than the HTC One X. What I'm saying is just release two versions of it, you know, one at the same time. You know, here's the window. You, you could choose. You choose your OS. I mean, obviously, the, the buttons on the front would have to be different to accommodate the requirements of the license on the Windows Phone side. But otherwise, why couldn't they be the same? I guess because it might it might confuse consumers, right? Like consumers don't even know if they have a Windows phone half the time. Right? I mean, <laughs> sure. we know, but <laughs> the average people. I don't know if I would. I, I think it would also. Sh right now, I think you're selling more Windows phones than ever before because Nokia is building such great hardware. People are buying yeah. it. Yep. They're buying the hardware. And well, because they see the devices and they're like, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you make yeah. it available on Android, I don't know if you're going to get that. Sure those purchases um i don't know yeah yeah i don't know right and that's the thing and i i, I don't and i agree that uh threatening microsoft with android makes plenty of sense but nokia not going android i think was the right decision for that company and remains the right decision for that company aren't they still struggling though i guess they're slowly growing in market share but it feels like they're yeah they're still struggling. yeah they're, they're, they're definitely struggling yeah what are the I mean, microsoft okay. had to finance them as part of this deal right, right. they gave them financing sure. It's I like think when that, you I sell think, someone your house, but then you give them a loan to yeah. help them buy the <laughs> yeah. house. It's two. There are really you know? two threats. One, they might go Android. Two, they might go out of the phone business. Right. Completely. And that yeah. would be that would be a disaster for Microsoft. Yeah. Right. Like that couldn't be worse. Oh my God! Yeah. Can you imagine? So you roll. You're going to roll off the OEMs now because unless they do what Google did, do Google very I think successfully built a firewall between Google and Motorola and convinced the OEMs. Maybe, by the way, maybe too effectively, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> you know, I love my Moto X, but it's but it's not the yeah. latest version of Android. Right. I mean, yeah. not a Nexus device, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. uh so Mike, I guess I don't see any indication that Microsoft's going to do that. So they probably rolled off Samsung, HTC and the other companies making Windows phones. They may have also rolled off those RT tablets. Nokia is going to probably make an RT, right? Uh, Surface they are. Or Windows Supposedly, RT. Supposedly, yeah. And yeah. that means probably it's it's Microsoft's going to be making the RT and Windows Phone hardware, and that's it. 
Right. I think it's important that Microsoft be the only company making an RT <laughs> device. You know, <laughs> keep it yeah. pure. Well, you'd love it. You'd love an ecosystem. At least there's still Windows. Um, so what there, I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know. I, uh, there was a story today, I think it's Slate, it was RIP Windows, and I thought it to was. myself, here we go. You know, here's some yeah. jerks spouting off, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I read this, and it's it's actually, you know, fair to say, I don't think that I don't think Windows is dead, but I, I it's possible that this is the beginning stages of the reversal of Microsoft's long-term policy, where the way that they've been successful for years and years, for decades, is to licensing Windows and having it be sold on a multiple Devices from multiple by manufacturers. The way, this article, uh, R.I.P. Windows by Farhad Manju, is also R.I.P. Farhad. He just took, <coughs> he just took a job at the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, but but he I makes like a good Farhad. point. That I think the, he's the way I think that he's this smart. stuff is done now. Android yeah. is uh, given away for free. It's a completely different type of thing. And uh, you know, I, Microsoft has to change something. And the, the baby steps of well, we're going to make our own first house, you know, first person, uh, first party hardware is what was is not the end game. It's kind of a step toward, you know, we're Apple, you know, and I'm not actually sure that that's the right way to go. And I, 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 I don't know, you look at the world of today and it's hard not to say Android has done to iOS with windows did to the Mac. Why is it Microsoft doing that? Right. You know, well, Microsoft's doing the Apple thing. In fact, more and more, it looks like Microsoft's restructuring. Yeah. Is similar Microsoft to has never succeeded at being Apple Leo. That's the problem. <laughs> No, they're, no, trying, they're, I, trying I, know, they're trying yeah. really hard. They're trying really hard. I can hard. grow a mustache, but I'm not Geraldo Rivera. They're you know doing the vertical integration thing. It just doesn't thing. make sense. Well, I think they're picking a funny time they're... to become Apple because, frankly, I think the <laughs> uh, the Apple strategy is being eaten alive by Android. Uh, right. And right. ecosystem lock-in ain't what it used to be. And by the way, with, with Microsoft pushing integrated services across all of the stuff that they do, Office, Xbox, you know, and, and Xbox, not just games, but entertainment, SkyDrive, all of that stuff that they offer. Maybe this is the time to walk away from the old way of doing Windows, that the value well, of yeah. Windows is that you keep people on your platform and then they consume more of your other services, and that's how you make money. If ever Maybe there were a time. they giving away Windows Phone. If ever there were a time, this is it, yep. right? Yep. They shouldn't be copying what, Apple. They should yeah, be copying. That's going to be the way they're going, right? Like when yep. we, we talked on Windows Weekly, I, I think it was when you weren't here, though, Paul, uh, about the idea of Windows 365, you, without you know? Right? We did it without you. Well, we, we did, did it because you. we did. We didn't dare do it in front of you. <laughs> no, but it's, it, this makes a ton of sense, right? If you yeah. if you um, have devices, they have some bare bones Windows, and then you have you sell a subscription. So every year you get an update to that yes. whatever's on yep. there, right? And that's how Windows starts evolving yeah, and, they, and becoming that, a I, service, right? Yes. God, I got to get off this podcast and write this up. I, <laughs> it is, you want to take a little hiatus? Microsoft and, uh, <laughs> is copying the wrong company. Yeah. Who should they copy? Google. 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 And how should they copy them? Everywhere that they can, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> as they as much as possible. Them. They're, I think they're copying both of them in a way, right? Yeah. Um, what would ELOP do? <laughs> Question. Right. This is my next T-shirt. <laughs> what would Stephen Elop do? <laughs> he would betray so Finland, Leo. Yeah. That's yes, what he would he do. he betrayed Finland. Yeah. How dare you? They had to be you. suspicious when he didn't move his family. Yeah. That should <laughs> right. have been the clue. Nokia LA. <laughs> um, so I thought Horace Didiou, who was a former Nokia guy did some very interesting uh, analysis of this. One of the things he said is, who's buying whom? Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, his his point was, you know, when you when you oh. do a purchase like this, you talk about resources because you can measure. You can say, well, they have 31,000 employees. They have factories in, you know, Finland and China, whatever. Yeah. This is the resources. And generally, that's where the dollars, you know, are allocated to. But he says, when you buy a company, you buy three things, three values. Resources is the easy one to measure. There's processes, right. how things are done, and certainly... Nokia seems to have a very good process for creating f value in phones. And then there's priorities. And that's what he says that's going to be kind of intriguing. He says a company only can have one set of priorities, one set, one business model, one raison d'etre. And he says this may very well be what you've just been talking about in a way. Where we well be? May we, may we well be <laughs> the absorption of priorities <laughs> from Nokia and the Microsoft. Yeah. Well, Your by the way, thoughts. there's precedent for this. This is the company that bought Skype for $8.5 billion and then proceeded to let that right. brand new division run roughshod over the rest of the company. I and mean, we've even talked about the former, uh, you know, 
Tony, uh, uh, what is it, Bill Tony? Bates. Tony Bates. Tony Stark. Yeah. Tony Stark, the former <laughs> the uh, former CEO of uh, Skype, maybe being yeah. yeah the next CEO. Yeah. He's a, that he's would a strong be, contender. That would be a that would be like Apple buying Next and let yes. their CEO run Apple. That's crazy. Yeah. Why would you ever do that? Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, does it? How does I guess the question is how did Bill Gates and the board perceive the situation? And it seems as if they're being very activist at this point, right? I mean, with dumping, regards to what? Well, dumping Balmer, buying Nokia, they're well, moving. Well, well, if, this is that if, death breeds alacrity. Thing, right? <laughs> they're running Doesn't as it? fast as they can. Yeah, you know, when you go to the doctor you, and he's like, "Hey, uh, there's a big black mark in your chest." You know, <laughs> things, things you, focuses you look, though, very focuses look, the mind look, remarkably, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> look at the stories, though, like especially the two today, New York Times and All Things D, which obviously Microsoft had a big hand in placing, right? Because yeah, they yeah. talk about all the backroom uh, anecdotes and deals of how this went down, and every one of these. Uh, reports say Balmer led this whole thing. Like it, it wasn't the board. It was Balmer, <laughs> and he he was like the one flying back and forth to Finland. He was negotiating. He was at the table. I mean, so it's kind of hard to say this was the board doing this. Um, and it sounds like in the middle of the negotiations, they had to tell Nokia and say, "Hey, by the way, um, Balmer's retiring. <laughs> the but, deal's but, still hey, on. <laughs> we're still going for it." <laughs> Maybe Steve Ma Balmer manufactured. Uh, I mean, look, Steve, look, there's nobody questions Steve Ballmer's absolute undying lifelong devotion to Microsoft. Yeah. That is not in question from from right. from the you know, his days as college roommate to Bill Gates to right now. There has never been another woman in uh, Ballmer's life. <laughs> and I wouldn't be at all surprised. This is the same thing that, you know, he sees yeah, this. Company loves just sliding to, to down beat the hill. Your analogy to death. This company has got some serious baggage, and what man would want her now? I mean, it's you mean Nokia. I, this no, I mean Microsoft. Oh. I mean, you know, the, the, well, we she's, still come back to this central she, issue that she's Nokia been ridden gets. hard, put away, wet, but there's still <laughs> <laughs> so there's still I, some life in the old mare. Uh, okay, but it's it's <laughs> Microsoft is so big and so complicated <laughs> that adding thirty three thousand employees or whatever that is. Yeah. Yep. is a, a, a distraction at the worst possible time a, at a time when this company is staring in the headlamps like a deer in the street and now they have this to deal with right yep. the the i assume we're going to remake the windows phone team which is suddenly a very vital and important part of microsoft despite being yeah. on the back burner for the past three years um the lineup of executives that are in this um, division or whatever they're going to call it is is going to look like an IKEA catalog because these people are all going to be from Finland and have crazy names, and they're not. <laughs> are they going to move to Redmond? Are they going to be in? I, how do you even? How do you do this? Like I, this, this company was already too complex, mm. right? And now we have this. And yeah. and by the way, Nokia was the best thing that ever happened to Windows Phone. But you know what? This is like when Microsoft integrated Windows Live into Windows. And I remember I said to those guys who used to be MSN before that, I, that there were only two ways this can go out. You're going to inspire those people to move more rapidly or they're going to kill you. And the former happened. We had that thing where like, oh, no, now we're going to have new versions of Windows Live Essentials every year or whatever. And, and Vista came, 7 came, 8 came, and we had two updates the entire time. And... Um, Nokia is this wonderful organization that they've been on a tear this year, all of these product releases, and now you're going to pull it into the slowest moving part of Microsoft at a time when they're supposedly making this grand transition as a company. How I don't understand how this is going to work. I have concerns yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yes, there are concerns. <laughs> <laughs> the timing is tough. Um, but you could also argue the timing might work for them because, yes, it, it, Windows Phone has been the slowest moving part of the company. And yes, they're about to put the wraps on GDR3, which is the last minor update to the Windows Phone 8 operating system before the blue one coming next year. So if this transaction does close by or before the uh, beginning of 2014, it'll be a good time for them to be coming in when the whole unified operating system team under Terry Meyerson is going to be dealing with Windows Phone Blue, uh, the next version of Windows, and then just having uh, finished up Xbox One operating system and, and getting that out to market in November and then moving forward. So I don't know when the right time is to do something that complicated, right? But at least at least they're going to be coming, stepping into the process 
while a lot of things are in play and they'll actually at least be able to influence what's happening. Yeah, I'm trying to be the right, right. glass there's, half full here. <laughs> yeah, no, you, no, that's fair. I, there's no, there's no right time. In other words, we can't point to some point in time and say that would have been better. I mean, Microsoft made that transition from the old Silverlight, you know, Windows Phone Seven X infrastructure to the new Windows Eight based infrastructure. Um, they're still working toward combining in some way over a period of time the uh, the various products they have. You know, Windows Eight slash RT slash Windows Phone slash Xbox One. Apparently, um, whether there's a, a single app format that works across all of those over time. I don't know. I'm not even sure that makes any sense, but certainly bringing them closer together makes some sense. But man, talk about throwing a wrench into a machine that already wasn't running very well. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a tough thing. Yeah. I'm so, you know, boy, I, uh, I did I'm gonna not, go, I'm going to go lay on the floor. I'm not I did not expect <laughs> this. I thought that you would see this a little more positively. I understand the challenges you got. I think the challenge is 31,000 Finnish employees, but you know uh, what it is? No, it's the windows live thing. It really is. It's, it's an organization that I care deeply about that I, I feel has been doing a tremendous job. And now I'm worried. It's not, not because like Microsoft is evil or the windows guys or the windows phone guys in this case are goons or something. It's not, it's not that it's, no. it's, it's just that it's a much bigger organization. There's a there's a, a certain kind of cement like quality to the huge hierarchies inside of Microsoft, and now they're going to work this stuff into it. And it's just this was already not moving well, you know. Yeah. And uh, th I'm just nervous about it. I uh, the I'm Windows hoping, Phone. I'm hoping no I'm hoping Nokia has the opposite influence, right? Like they actually kind of get the lead out at Microsoft, right? And oh, they no, come of in course. and yeah. and. Elop's going to head up the devices division, right? So that's going to have in it mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. Lumia phones, their tablets when they come out, the Asha phones. They're also going to have yep. um, Surface in there, right? So yep. he's going to be the head of Surface. He's hardware, hardware. Yeah. Unless he becomes CEO. Yeah. Unless he becomes CEO. He's going to be right. CEO. I'm well, not that's sure the thing. Is. I mean, so in other words, you're right. If <laughs> this guy running devices and services are... I get, what's it called? Devices, whatever it's called. Devices, uh, yeah. The great. New devices and studios, I think, is. Yeah, is studios. I know, yeah. Because it also so. <laughs> adds in um, the games. Yeah, like the game studios. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because Damn. Xbox Live goes with operating. Come studios. on, he's going to be CEO. <laughs> There's no way you do this. There's no way. You, well, I get. Uh, he's going to be CEO. I'm not convinced he is. If he is, if he is CEO, here's going to be the saving grace. Uh, if he is. He kind of throws what Mary Jo just said in a little bit of a warp because what happens right. then. But there is another possibility, which is that someone from Nokia becomes the person in charge Don't of that device. Don't you think yeah. that before Stephen Elop said, okay, he said, but who am I going to be reporting to next year? I can't, they can't, he can't guarantee Elop that you're going to become CEO, right? That's, that's not possible because this is something that requires the board. But. Right. Well, who, he, he can who certainly has, say, look, who, you're going to be in line for it. I mean, you're, you're right, one of the candidates. He's a candidate. candidate. He is a candidate. You know? No question. But I would want to know, maybe maybe Stephen Elop didn't have the option. Maybe maybe he had to sell. Maybe they had to sell Nokia. But I would have wanted to know if I'm Stephen Elop, well, who am I mm -hmm. reporting to? Yeah, yeah, I'd lo I love that idea. I'm going to run devices and, and uh, toy, toy stores. But who do I Why report to in stores? a year? Yeah. yeah. You're going to report to the new CEO. By the way, no one but at Microsoft. who is that? Is it going to be? No one at Microsoft knows. knows the answer to that Nobody question. Nobody knows yet. Nobody knows. Nobody. That, that's not, you can't, so there's, I, there's no promise to As Stephen to Elop, there. I would say that's like buying a house without knowing what's in the basement. I would want to know that. Well, Everybody unfortunately, that's the, that's the mm. current reality of Microsoft. There's yeah. no. Is it? Did he, could he? Well, I mean, I, I don't know what the structure of I Nokia think, is. I, I presume they Steven, have a board like an American company, and the board is the one who decided what to do. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I don't think well, we could make any assumptions. I don't about know, that. Yeah. but 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 yeah. Elop and I don't. So I doubt Elop had the power to kill that. But what he had the power to do is say, "Hey, I'm not sticking around." Mm. At, at you know, you you need me for this transition. You need right. me desperately. You buy Nokia yeah. without me, it's doomed. I think they wanted him. And by the way, you know, uh, Stephen Elop's family lives in uh, the Redmond area. Um, uh, I, I think him coming back was very natural. I think they made a deal. And I think yeah. Bill Gates took a walk with Stephen <laughs> Elop through the woods, <laughs> brought him over to the 500,000 square foot underground bunker that Steve <laughs> that Bill lives in, 
It is. Said, you're right about that. And said, see this? All this, someday this could be yours. <laughs> he, he said, look, I can't, we're not going to announce this. I can't tell you, I can't say this publicly, but just so you know, the job really? will you be yours. That, um, I think so. Wow. I think, so I think the reason that, that, Ha that has some weight and there are all kinds of backroom deals that happen like that. But I also would say um, if he is the next CEO, a lot of people are going to say you brought in somebody who isn't fresh blood, who isn't new blood. It's going to be business as usual. Oh, I agree with all of that. A failing company. But and um, it's doesn't it's not a good look for you, Microsoft. I understand <laughs> the know? challenges of it. I do. Yeah. But I'm just saying you don't get ELOP with Nokia if you don't make that guarantee. You, I'm telling you, he know, if look, I'm, I know his value to the company, and I'm just some guy. He knows exactly what that Microsoft seven and a half billion dollars is meaningless without him. Is that not true? Say that one uh, time. If he heads up devices, that's a really important division at Microsoft. I'd say it's like the most no one of the. Two I agree. I'm okay. That's what I would be saying to him if I'm Bill Gates. But but yeah. Stephen, you're going to be heading up devices. He says, look, I'm the CEO of Nokia. Yeah. And you're going to make me a vice senior vice president in charge of devices and Toy Story. I, 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 <laughs> I want the CEO. This division is getting more excellent every time you mention it. <laughs> I have enough money to go live wherever I want and do whatever I want. I want CEO. If you want Nokia, I want CEO. And I think that deal was made. I think it's done. And you know what you say uh, if you're Steve Ballmer to Stephen Elop? Okay, go ahead and go Android, and let's see if you can make any money. I think I think that's they're completely willing to do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't imagine. That. I mean, Nokia leaves Microsoft. Maybe I've been watching too much Sopranos. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like. I definitely think I think Elop is probably if you had to pick like who are in the top three candidates right now. He's one of the three, right? But. I think Microsoft still is probably hoping they can find somebody on the outside who's going to bring a new feeling to the company because they keep getting criticized as a uh, same old retread. And, you know, he was at Microsoft for three years. He ran the business division. So he he obviously knows like Exchange and Unified Communications and Office. He knows a lot about Microsoft's yeah. businesses. But, you know, uh, uh, other people will say, well, when he was at Office, he didn't do anything. He just kind of like let them run the course. And I remember when, when he left, Balmer put out a note and just said, hey, thanks for maintaining the business, Steve. See you later. Right. So it wasn't like there was like, wow, this guy was awesome and we're really sad he's leaving. My, my only observation is that, he, it, and it kind of depends on how ambitious, how ambitious Elop is. It does. My, my only observation is right. that he has a considerable amount of clout at this particular junction in time. He can't kibosh the deal. I'm not saying that. The board, no. the board, but what he can say is, look, you may get Nokia, but you're not going to get me. I want some guarantees. What are you going to give me? You know, you're giving, this happens all the time. When companies yeah. get sold, chief management is in a very strong position if that management is key to the operation. You right. might buy 31,000 employees. There's really one that matters. So mm -hmm. what am I going to get? Yeah. And it kind of comes down to what, is, what does Elop want and how ambitious he is and whether he, he understands the position he's in. I bet I, if, he's a, if he's CEO material, then he should certainly understand that. He's yeah. in an extremely and, and strong position right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. He's in a strong position. And he always has made it clear his ambition is to be a CEO. He's always said oh, that. There you go. So, yeah. Why, I mean, why would he want to be a senior vice president in charge of devices and uh, bingo boards? It's not. Because your company is going to go bankrupt if you stay. <laughs> is it really? Is, was no, I mean. They weren't in risk of going bankrupt. No, they, have a, tomorrow, they still right? own the third world market. Yeah. For cheap handsets. Right. They weren't going to be a sexy company maybe next year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, they're perfect for Microsoft. Board, <laughs> would his board let him stay if they started really falling apart? Or would they be like, hey, you got to go. You're the one who told us to bet on Windows Phone. You know, but didn't you just say he turned around the company? No, 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 no. But he didn't. Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, this is, you have to, you can make a, like a sports comparison. Compare him to a coach who picked up a, a baseball or soccer team or whatever that was falling apart. And, um, you know, they're not a losing team. Well, actually, I guess they technically are still a losing team. But, you know, um, you, you can only turn around something like that so far. I, I think that what he did was incredible and the correct decisions. I think that if they had gone Android, we, would have, we, we wouldn't have been talking about Nokia anymore. They'd really? Be gone. 
Yeah. Well, it is a very yeah. competitive place. So uh, going with yeah. Windows Phone was a smart move. It was certainly a differentiator. They still have Asha. They keep talking oh, about Asha. By the way, there, there are companies who have been doing Android for years, like LG and right. HTC. So we're struggling. It almost don't matter, yeah. even though they create beautiful you devices. You can argue that the HTC makes the best Android phone, but it is not a player. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, Samsung's crap stuff is the is is the it really it really yeah. is uh, people is, like crap, Leo. I don't know if you've ever it's, noticed. It's that. turning crappier all the time. I mean, yeah. this Note Three with a stitched leather pleather in the back, that is ugly. Yeah. <laughs> stitched leather pleather. I'm gonna get a car that has that. It's gonna be like. A, <laughs> so I understand like that Elop may very well not be the right guy for CEO. But he, he has a good, good But I think he had a very big lever. <laughs> and he's he had a lever. He's the George H.W. Bush of the Microsoft alumni. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's paid his dues. And he, you could argue he has both devices and enterprise and service experience, right? He's He ran, uh, you know, the uh, it was involved in enterprise at Microsoft, and now yeah. he's a device guy at Nokia. Here's a guy who has experience in both uh, mm -hmm. halves of the business. I don't know how we rate his time at Microsoft because, you know, oh, during his tenure in, in running the business division, they released yet another version of Office. So good I don't for know them. anything about I, him, frankly. I just Yeah, I don't either. I mean, I, I remember he appeared at whatever the launch event was, say probably Office 2010 or whatever it was. And it was on the set of SNL, where SNL is in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Right. I, I remember the location. That was more notable. And then he yeah. came out and talked, and I thought, who the heck is this guy? <laughs> and I think, you know, he must have taken over when uh, Steve uh, Sanofsky left to go do Windows, right? Is he that did. how the... I think so. Yeah, I think that yep, uh, was around that time. Or, or was it... Was he there before that? And then Kurt Delbini came in there somewhere too, but... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't a joke. There is a company called Nukia. <laughs> well, by the way, it is a it joke. It is a joke, but yes, there is. <laughs> is it a joke? The, the best, well, this is why it's a joke. If you go to Nukia.com, yeah. it's it's a company that's selling Kia cars. Oh, new, get your new Kia. <laughs> well, like they, didn't new get the, Kia. they didn't get the domain name. No, so that was a dumb little thing for them. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's new Kia. It is. So In awesome. uh, Irving, Louisville, and Plano, Texas... Oh it is Central God. Texas Kia. That's where you can get a new Kia. Is like the new Kia Forte? <laughs> Do you have the new Kia Lumia? <laughs> Do you think people ask them for that? Well, maybe yeah. they need a better name. But that is, uh, is it the actual name of a company? It's I don't understand. <laughs> uh, by the way, you could try to research this company. I think all it exists in its head. All you I don't find is Kia. Is if I look, if I Google <laughs> N-E-W-K-I-A, all you find is Kia dealerships. Right. <laughs> and then the news story about and the, and the story we're alluding to. story on uh, ZDNet. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think this thing actually exists. I think this is a fantasy that this guy's created for himself. <laughs> Thomas uh, so, Ziliakis, is, right. Ziliakis is the new... It's like one of the guys that drove Nokia into the ground over the past decade <laughs> thinks their strategy now is wrong. So he's created Nokia, so he can do it again. To it's the new them. McAfee. Right. He actually <laughs> tried to buy Nokia. He tried to raise money and buy them so that he could make them an Android wow. company, but that didn't work out. It looks like the bad um, guy from Armand Asante movie or something, like one of those B-budget kind of <laughs> sci-fi movies. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you, he's McAfee. All so he needs is, is a few guns, some uh, some uh, bath crystals, and a, and a house in Belize. And uh, <laughs> Yep, and he's there. He's there. It's like the, what was it, Um, uh, some comedian, I can't think of his name right now, it said that the only thing Bill Gates needs is a monocle and a Cheshire cat. <laughs> and a monocle. He really does look like <laughs> Dr. Evil. Yeah. I think, <laughs> Dennis Miller said that. Uh, yeah, they're based in Singapore. That's why our um, correspondents, why Eileen correspondents over there yeah. have got this story yeah. at ZDNet. And um, yeah, he... He used to be uh, Asia Pacific CEO for Nokia at one point, I think. So now they're yep. going to build Android phones? They want to hire ex-Nokia people to go and do a deal with the part of Nokia that remains after Microsoft bought right. the handset part and right. take their know-how and patents and then build Android phones with the people who are, are disenfranchised from Nokia who wish they had gone Android. You can't I think up. that's <laughs> not a small group because I look at yeah. things like Mego. Uh, Nokia had some very interesting, innovative development. Symbian is still an amazing OS. Nokia, there were smart engineers at Nokia who were not making Windows phones. Yeah. Uh, wow, very interesting. To me, that shows 
some kind of corporate upheaval that doesn't bode well. You bought a company that is maybe not the most unified company, right? Some, when companies are troubled, uh, it, uh, under the surface, all sorts of bad things are happening. And it could be Nokia is, is a, a boat anchor. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Huawei, the Chinese phone manufacturer, was in talks to buy BlackBerry, has decided not to. So I think Microsoft could pick up BlackBerry, too, for a song. But, yeah. So what, <laughs> I mean, then they could own all the way, losing Leo, platforms. Let me, ask, let me ask a simple math question. This is you'll enjoy this one. Yeah. Do three turkeys make an eagle? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wow. That's a good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I just we'll just watch. I, it won't happen for uh, a quarter or so, but yeah. I think there may be a surprisingly early announcement of the new CEO at Microsoft, and I think his initials will be SE. But we'll see. Yeah. You know what, Leo? You should actually go and bet. You can bet on the next CEO, Lad Brooks, I think. And he, he, You don't make much because I'm pretty sure Elop is uh, he is leading by, by a, far. By a bunch. Yeah. yeah, he is. But you still should bet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel very confident. Let me yeah. see what the I feel. Are. I feel very mixed in my in my views. And it's not because I think he would be a terrible CEO. I just don't know how much Microsoft wants to portray that they're bringing in new people. And, and it's, you know, when you go for a new CEO, a lot of it is also about the image, right? And, and you've got, you've got a lot of things changing right now. So is it a good message that you bring in somebody who is seen as ex Microsoft? And I don't know, not damaged goods. I'm not trying to say that, but. So but uh, I'll say it. Okay. Steve, you know, <laughs> according to Lad, Ladbroke, which is the uh, big uh, bookmaking, uh, English bookmaking uh, company, Elop, at least last at last time I checked, is five to one. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty long odds. I mean, if I bet 100 bucks, I make 500, right? Yeah. Kevin Turner, six to one. Steven Sanofsky, eight to one. Can you They're bet against one. that? They're not <laughs> yeah. I would bet strongly. Right. I want to win when Steven Sanofsky doesn't become yeah. CEO. Yeah, Chi yeah. Lu, Julie Larson Green. Tony Bates should be better than 12, 10 to one. I think so too. Yeah, because I think that frankly, he should be number one or two on this list. Me too. And Satya Nadella should be high too. Uh, it's just people who do these, they, they don't they always don't know, know anything. Who. Yeah. <laughs> I see Vic Gundotra is on the list, 25 to 1. I don't think so. By the way, Cheryl author Sandler. of the turkeys comment I alluded to earlier. And Bill Gates, <laughs> you can get 50 to 1 odds on Bill Gates becoming the next CEO of Microsoft. Oh, yeah, man. these guys are idiots. Uh, but, you know, 5 to 1. I might might lay down a bet. I don't know. Is that legal in the, in this jurisdiction? <laughs> 5 to 1. COO Kevin Turner six to one. That might be that might be a I don't know. The pr He's not going to get the, it. The other, yeah, well, that's the other thing. The other there are no candidates that leap to mind except Tony Bates. No, there aren't, that's, and that's the. But we problem. don't know the outsiders, right? Right. I, Mary Jo made the point earlier. I, I don't remember if it was privately or on one of the shows we did, but um, that you know the next maybe the next CEO of Microsoft should be an engineer type, right? Oh yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah. I, and and when you think about moving from Gates to Balmer. To yeah. Turner, you know, that's like, oh, like it's the, you know, it's kind of the uh, wrong trajectory, right? That's what happened uh, at Apple. They got the ops guy in there running Apple. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, I'd love to see an outsider, somebody who has real experience too. in other businesses. I know Alan Mulally's not on the on the list because he's retiring. That it's that's the you guy, need that you, guy. Need. Yeah. you need. You need the the young Alan Mulally who can yeah. come in and take a company with great value. And and express that value and, and turn it into the company it ought to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the next CEO is going to make or break Microsoft. Frankly, yeah. I mean, it's I hard agree. to say that about a company this big with revenues like that, but yeah, feels like this is a big job. And you know, look what uh, Marissa Meyer is doing at Yahoo. I mean, I think you get the right person, you can maybe re-energize it. Jury's still out whether she'll actually make a company yeah. that's viable, but she, the attention is back anyway. We're going to take a break. We're talking Windows. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Hey, I really appreciate it. You guys uh, joined uh, Tom Merritt for breaking news when uh, the Nokia announcement happened. And I think that's one of the things that makes this uh, um, makes me very happy about the network is that you can get really great commentary and expertise uh, when, when important s stories break. Yeah, and uh, actually, actually, I should say, you know, um, people respond very quickly. 
you know, I sort yeah. of send an email out like, I don't know if you guys want to do this, but oh, we want to do it. Yeah, you know, no, it's nice. I mean, well, I feel very fortunate that we have really two of the premier observers of Microsoft. I mean, I don't think there's anybody better out there. So yeah, uh, Tom and I is a great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our show, and on that note, our show today brought to you by Squarespace.com, the secret behind the best websites in the world. We're huge fans of Squarespace. We run our blog on it. Frankly, I wish my other websites were as reliable as our Squarespace site. Squarespace is both hosting and software. Everything you need. It's, that's why they call it the all-in-one platform. For commerce, yes, they have an e-commerce solution that's the best in the business. For a great-looking portfolio, for your next blog even. It's so affordable at $8 a month for an annual plan. that you It's fine for a blogging platform. The beauty of this is because they run the hosting and the software running on top of it, they're so tightly integrated. Squarespace sites never go down. They're always secure. Whenever they improve the platform, and they do it almost daily, you get those improvements immediately. New features, new designs, improved support. 20 new beautiful templates for you to start with. They've won numerous design awards. Very easy to use, but at the same time, if you're a professional, their developer platform is superb, bar none with a color coding syntax uh, aware editors you could do css javascript html5 <clears throat> the price is right the features are right and i'll tell you if you're a developer look at the code underlying squarespace you'll see how gorgeous it is they take just as much pride in the back end code as they do in the front end design i i'm so impressed with squarespace they do the hosting they do the software you do the content. You do the sales. And take a look at the prices. If you want to do e-commerce, 24 bucks a month when you buy an annual plan. That gets you unlimited bandwidth. You never get a bandwidth bill. Unlimited physical or digital products. Plus, in the mobile store, mobile or, or desktop, by the way, and that's true of every Squarespace design. They're always mobile ready automatically. You get inventory tracking, tax calculations, shipping calculations. You can even add coupons. It's just great. Buy the annual plan, you'll get a custom domain name free. They'll hook it up. Now, here's the deal. You can start the trial without a credit card. Just go to squarespace.com and click get started. You'll have full run of the place for two weeks. But after you've played with it, imported your data, made it look the way you want, tried 10 different templates, if you say, this is nice, I like this, please do us a favor and use the offer code Windows 9 when you buy. You'll get 20% off, and Squarespace will know you heard it on Windows Weekly. Squarespace.com. Remember that offer code, Windows, and the number 9, because we're in September, at Squarespace.com. We're talking about Redmond, Xbox. Hey, I saw the Xbox is in production. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. We're going to get it in November. So excited. So excited. <laughs> when we were doing the show notes, Paul's like, I cannot believe you don't want to put the Xbox date as number I, one. I, I made it that, number I wrote two. wrote that in all caps. Yeah, November 22nd, <laughs> a week before my birthday. My birthday oh, nice. comes early this year. Awesome. And a week after the Sony PS4 launch. Oh, really? Wow. Which is kind you of can't cool. tell me these guys aren't looking at each other over their shoulders, you know? <laughs> when are you launching? I don't know. When are you launching? Well, <laughs> right. When are you launching? How late can we go and still be holiday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is fairly late, isn't it? One month before uh, yeah. Christmas, but I, but in time. Mm -hmm. uh, will there be shortages? Uh, will they? Will they of course, there will. Yeah, of course. They're taking orders though, still, right? Yeah, I, mean, I pre-ordered pre mine. In fact, I'm getting the uh, first day model or whatever it is. Sony said that they sold over one million uh, pre-orders. Microsoft said that they sold out. All, I said I should say almost sold out out of all of their pre-orders. Oh. But they never said how many. Almost you know, yeah. thirty-six thousand pre-orders. Yeah, I mean, how almost sold out. Anyway, I'm I'm excited about that. Yeah, I know you are too. <laughs> yeah, I I, th I think there's been a lot of weirdness. I, I should say there has been a lot of weirdness around the Xbox One, obviously during this launch period. But I, I honestly, I nothing has really tempered my belief that this thing is going to be pretty amazing. I did not I'll, order a I'll PS4. I, 172 I'm... straight hours when it first comes out. <laughs> We know you, Paul. He's pissed off that they put it on the iPad. You know, I, I just had to download it to Amateurs. see what it's like. If this thing is good, I'm going to go kill myself. Amateurs. <laughs> the iOS. Is it, uh, is it a full game? Because they did the yeah, zombies it's before. a Call of Duty game. What? <laughs> they can't do that. Well, first person is terrible on touch, so at least I it get is, that. It is, because you have these really weird 
on screen doohickeys. I hate that. Yep. I hate yes. it when that happens. Um, we didn't mention this, but uh, is is value act the active activist investor that has mm -hmm. like a few like 004 percent of Microsoft stock? Some small. Point, I think it's 0.8 percent. 0.8 percent. It is. 0.8. Yeah. Still enough to threaten a proxy right, battle. All you need to get on the board, like I said, like this company will capitulate to anybody. So there are they actually getting a seat on the board? It yeah. looks like it. They've cleared the path for them to take a seat on the board. After if you the read next that meeting. filing, they're getting yeah. a seat. And the they only are. question is when. And yeah. by the way, when literally means as soon as is legally possible. Right. It's it says starting, starting at the first quarterly board meeting after November 2013. So it could be this year, right? All that tells me is that the board is meaningless. We looked at the board last week and said, who are these people? The board is meaningless. <laughs> it's meaningless. I, like it. I think I, I referred to some of their members as being... The guy who played Mr. Hooper on Sesame Street. <laughs> it's like, it is. There's, you know, there's John Thompson is important. It's, it's Bill crazy. Gates is important. Yeah. Uh, Steve Ballmer is important for a little longer. And the rest of them feel like uh, placeholders. Do you think that's what they're saying as well? Value Act, go ahead. Have your seat at the board. I mean, it is a they, vote. They did I, it, to, I, I think, to to stop a proxy battle, right? right? They didn't so want that there proxy was, battle. There was oh. thoughts that Value Act was going to get on the board and start agitating and bad-mouthing and... So this is the tit for this. tat. Here's a yeah. conspiracy theory I literally just made up in my head 10 seconds ago. <laughs> what if the plan is to get them to be on the board after the board has picked the new CEO? Oh. In other words, they're, they'll, they'll time this to ensure that they don't have a say in that. Yeah. I, I would not be surprised about that. Yeah. It's a hedge fund, we should mention. Um, yeah. Point, it's a hedge fund. A hedge fund. 0.8% uh, of... Microsoft's stock yeah. is worth what? How much? Is millions? Billions? <laughs> Today, about $17. The only, you know, reason, <laughs> the only reason this would carry weight is if the perception uh, is that stockholders are so unhappy with Microsoft that they could actually win a proxy battle. Yeah. Right. And, right. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's mostly institutional investors. Well, this, right? By the way, this yeah. company actually has a pretty well-established track record. And no, they're not bad, although they do uh, they do use public pressure when time when when needed. Yeah. And by the way, you know, I, I I don't think there's much argument to the fact that maybe Microsoft's strategy over the past decade should be questioned. Maybe there are uh, things they could have done differently. I mean, I, I my view into this whole thing has to do with products and which ones maybe they should get rid of, which ones they should keep, how maybe they should do, make, you know, decisions differently. But of course, what these guys are primarily concerned with is something that doesn't interest me in the slightest, which is getting more value back to shareholders, yeah. right? It's about <laughs> dividends, buybacks. Yeah. It's right. like Carl well, Icahn By the way, I mean, if, if Microsoft makes the right strategic moves and releases products that excite people, it's certainly possible that their stock price could rise and that that would generate money for stockholders, shareholders. Right. Um, but, uh, of course, they're, they're not looking at it that specifically. I, I, I mean, I'm, that would be one possibility, of course. But if they were able to do it through more dividends or through other means that are simply financial related. I mean, I, firstly, yeah. that's not interesting to me in the slightest, you know. We should, we should also mention what the, so Value Act hasn't really said what their stance is about Microsoft, it's reorg, all that. But the one thing they right. said that people are reading a lot into is they've said investors have not appreciated Microsoft's back end software that it uses to power servers and databases. And These software. guys probably don't want Microsoft to be in the device business. They probably yeah. want them well, to sell that off. To right? be the enterprise and company, right? They want them to be the enterprise company. They want them to be IBM, and Microsoft totally does not want to go they that they got to bring back back office. Remember back office? Yeah, I remember back office. <laughs> it was like the office for the back room. <laughs> yeah. You know, which yeah. wasn't like a, it sounds like an illegal gambling den of some kind. It was like the, you know, the servers would be out in the back room. So before there was an exchange, they had like proxy server and they had the old um, version of SQL server that was based on, uh, boy, I can't think of the name of the company, um, Cybex, not Cybex, um, whatever that company was. They had the, pre <laughs> the predecessor to exchange, like Microsoft Mail Server. Yeah. Uh, they had, and, and of course, NT Server, NT Advanced Server or whatever those products were called at the time. Um, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that, yeah. there's there's your IBM you know version of Microsoft right there so value yeah, act know. has uh, their 0.8 percent stake is worth two billion so they have two billion dollars worth of Microsoft stock that's not insignificant yeah. it's not I don't know if they're the largest shareholder that's not at the company but I would guess and so the person who will be sitting on the board 
is a guy is the president of Value Ga Act, a guy named G. Mason Morfitt. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> I think you should talk like this. <laughs> I I'm G. Mason Morfitt. He smokes a huge <laughs> cigar. I'm here he to like vote. Boss Hogg from the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> G. Mason Morfitt. Uh, wow. Yeah, wow, right? Wow. I know. This is unprecedented. Microsoft doesn't uh, usually do this kind of thing with bowing to shareholder pressure like that. I mean, they must. The only reason they did is because of, they were genuinely scared of a proxy battle. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Yeah. And that means and they, really, it's, it's, they, they believe that want... institutional shareholders anyway, people who carry yeah. enough votes to make a difference, are unhappy with the flat stock price. And, yeah. I, and I, this leads to a theory I had earlier where, you know, they, this gives them the time to pick their own next CEO and not have right. a proxy fight, right. hold, you know, force that issue right. and right. maybe get them involved in that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, so comparatively, we're talking about how much they own. They So they own, like you're saying, 0.8%. But Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer together, what do they own? They own much like more than that. It's not much. It's 9%, like 9%. 9%. 9%. Yeah. 9%. Yeah. And they together. are the, the, by far the two biggest shareholders. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's not like yeah. someone owns 49% of Microsoft. No, 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 no. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, the fear, the Microsoft board fear and the ma top management fear is they don't want to sell off Xbox, right? They don't want to be told, you guys shouldn't do consumer devices. You, you really yeah. aren't that good at this, guys. So they... They're afraid that's that these guys could actually sway sentiment and make them have to do those kind of moves. And they they Microsoft believes that's not what they should do. They believe that it's, you know, devices that are fueling services and services fueling devices and that you need both to be successful. And so they they don't want Value X implied uh, direction to become what happens. Well. Moving on, yeah. uh, next generation Surface Pro, uh, Surface Pro 2. We're hearing leaks. Yeah, information's um, finally starting to dribble out. What's the timing, you think, for this? By fall? Yeah. So what's the day that Windows 8 one's coming out? Oh, October, October 18th. 18th. I, yeah, of course. I don't know I that for a fact. That makes I sense. I bet that's though. a launch. Don't but you? I bet that's. Yeah, so new yeah. version. It that's, makes too much sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Paul, yeah. you think you think the two will launch together, right? Not like last time where one right. RT launches and then months go by. Yeah, and, and I'm, ba I'm basing this on information I got that, you know, there's also a mini Surface coming, um, like an 8-inch version of the Surface that will not launch at the same time as the other two. It's going to be a little bit later in the year. And that's why I think the other two are launching together because that's how that information was told to me. Uh, yeah. And that mm -hmm. suggested to me that the other two, the replacements for the current devices... Yeah. Would ship at the same time. And there's also an RT2. Yeah, except it's not going to be called RT. It should be yeah. called RT2T. Yeah. RT2D2. R2D2. Yeah. 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 What, what's it going to yeah. be called? Just Surface 2. Surface 2. That'll be the Surface RT. Surface 2, the quickening. That'll be Surface 2 <laughs> and Surface Pro 2. Surface 2 Electric two. Boogaloo. <laughs> Sorry, Surface 2 and Surface Pro 2. Surface 2, The Wrath Pro. of Khan. I could do this all day, Leo. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Mr. Sequel. <laughs> okay, so, um, and this will be Haswell, of course. Um, yep. Surface Pro, yeah. That means good battery life. Well, Haswell. I'm disturbed about Paul's, what he's hearing yeah. on battery life. He's hearing seven hours. Oh. Yeah, I've got a lot of pushback to that as if I, you know, invented the number, but. No, I know um, you didn't. Yeah, not not quite as high as I thought. I, I, uh, I, I as you would think, you know. Well, Haswell's uh, only. I mean, Intel's only saying fifty percent improvement in battery life, so that's about right. Actually, four that's to true. seven, it's right? About, yeah, it's about that's, right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think we hear Haswell and we think magic, you know. Yeah, it's I not know. magic. Like the next one's going to have 117 hours of battery, <laughs> up from four and a half. Yeah, fifty percent improvement is about right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah no, that's true. I, that's what Apple, the, you know, Apple got with the uh, MacBook Air. This is a Haswell MacBook Air. Went from eight uh, to twelve. Yeah, except except that the MacBook Air, thirteen inch, gets twelve hours of battery 12. life. Well, yeah, I mean, but it, but it's I mean, fifty percent improvement. A, <laughs> okay, but that's a twelve is a big number, Leo. It's yeah. a large number. Yeah. Yeah. To get me all the way to Australia. <laughs> two, uh, twelve hours of battery life is like two day battery life of normal usage. I, I mean, I yeah, it's, that's pretty impressive. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, eight gigs of RAM. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, I mean, it seems like the the new Surface Pro, the Surface Pro Two, looks to be very similar to the first gen and kind of a mod, what I would call a modest 
upgrade, right? Same case, you know, it, same, it looks like it's kind of the same. You know, other than obviously Haswell instead of Ivy Bridge. Um, I, I think there are going to be RAM options on this one instead of just, I think the current one has four gigs of RAM. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's it's what you would expect. And I guess if you if you think about the huge investment that Microsoft made just to develop these devices, you, you don't completely change the form factor the second time around, not just because of the expense of coming up with a new case, which, you know, I think a lot of people hope this thing would be thinner and lighter you know, than the first version, which is admittedly kind of heavy for a tablet. Um, but also for the accessories, right? Because you have this kind of family of accessories that's going to grow, you know, now this fall with the new devices. And you want these things to be as interchangeable as possible. And if you screw around too much with the form factor, that becomes more difficult. Right. Um, but I do wonder why, you know, how is it possible that on a, on a pro device, it, it doesn't have, I don't know, two USB ports? I mean, is this pushing it in some way that we can't have another hole in the side of the thing. I, I It's amazing. I think they need to use up the stock they have, right? They have all those vapor the case, bag yeah. cases, right? And so they got to use think, those. Like, why did we make six million of these things? <laughs> right. You know, right. yeah, I don't know. And then there'll be another Surface, right? There'll be a Surface 3 and maybe that one will have two USB ports yeah. once they get rid of all I, their stock. <laughs> my, my ideal device, by the way, would be the Surface Pro in the body of Surface RT with that same mm -hmm. weight, you know, because yeah. that device is so wonderful to carry and hold, mm -hmm. and and then you, you, of course, you use you have to use it, and then it becomes not so wonderful. But uh -huh. that device with the like Haswell innards or whatever, I think would be amazing. And and you know, maybe maybe they shoot for that for Surface Three. I don't know. Yeah. I guess here, two thoughts about this. I mean, for the people who did hold off and are holding off, it's going to be an improvement, right? I think the the four and a half hours of battery life to seven is good. Obviously, that's positive news. Hopefully, it doesn't run as hot. The fan mm -hmm. on the Surface Pro can kick in at inopportune times. Uh, hopefully, it has that, that kind of power management nicety. So, it's a it's it's an okay upgrade. It's an upgrade. You know, I think a two-position kickstand is enough for me to buy a new one. Okay. But if you, if you bought a Surface Pro, I guess one of the nice things about this one is that it's not, it doesn't blow the Original Surface Pro out of the, Pro right. out of the water, so you right. don't have to feel bad feel about bad. it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Because that good. is a problem with these rapid yeah, yeah. releases. I mean, I'm sure, you know, people buy an iPhone and then the iPhone two, or whatever. You know, the next one comes out, it's like, oh, well, uh, I should have waited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not, you know, so it's not that bad, and and yeah. there's no real visual differentiation. And so, if these things are out, not that you'll ever see someone using a Surface, but if you do, you, you know, you, you don't have to, you don't have to feel weird because you get the old one. You know, <laughs> like they look the same. Like no one has. To Somebody will say, do you have the Kickstand that goes in two positions. Yeah. Oh, you have the old one. one <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, and how about the news that just broke on uh, Win Super Site and NeoWin.net about the covers? Ooh. Yeah, Brad has the story on NeoWin about the the power uh, the power cover, which we've been waiting to hear about forever and ever. Um, <laughs> I think Hanno Spinet sort of implied that they were doing it back in a like a Reddit chat or something at the beginning of the year somewhere. I, somewhere he he kind of admitted or implied they would be doing this thing. And uh, it is coming this year, but not with the launch of the devices. It's going to be a little bit later for some reason. It looks like basically a slightly thicker type cover that has a battery in it. And so, of course, it's going to be heavier as a result. And maybe that's what gets you over the top for the battery life thing. I don't have figures for how that improves it. I think it's going to vary by device. But, you know, even if it added a couple of hours of battery life, there you go. It solves the problem. You need a keyboard. So it's, yeah. there's no extra battery for t touch cover, right? Only type cover, right? That's obvious. Well, I, I wouldn't put, I mean, it's it's a separate device, right? So yeah, there separate. would be, uh, you know, we have type cover, we have um, yeah. touch cover, and then we're going to have power cover. Right. Power cover, yeah. Yeah. Which is, the, the, it I is should a say, type cover, key, though, the right? keyboard on it is the type cover keyboard. It's yeah. a type cover keyboard. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. It's the real <laughs> keyboard, the, not yeah. the Mylar Atari 400 thing. Right. And you know, yeah, uh, it's it's going to be good. I think um, I was disappointed to see it won't work with the regular Surface RT, just with the Surface 2. So if you have a Surface RT, you're not going to be able to use this. Although you already don't have be, like eight, yeah. eight hour battery. I don't but mean I to beat that one to death, but I do feel like that original RT device is going to be the one that gets uh, obsoleted the most quickly. And this is only one indication of that. But I, I mean, I think... 
given the quality of the hardware, uh, I should I shouldn't put it that way. Given the chipset that's in there, it's it's going to be the one yeah. that kind of falls off a little more quickly than the others. Um, you know, like the Ivory Bridge version of the Surface Pro is going to be a viable computer for years to come. I don't know if anyone's going to be want to you know is going to want to use the original Surface RT a couple of years from now. I collect ancient Microsoft gadgets. I still <laughs> Me use too. My, I still use Look, my. I know. Zoom I know for HD. a fact you don't have the space in your room to hold this, but in your apartment. But I will give you my Surface RTs if you promise to put I them on the wall. Have to decide: like or Blender something. or Surface RT. Blender mm. or Surface RT. Which one you has to You could blend go? the Surface <laughs> RT and make a video of it. <laughs> I could, but I like mine, so no. <laughs> <laughs> will it blend? And they obviously these new Surface RT, uh, the new Surface Two and Surface Two Pro will ship with Windows 8.1 on them, of course. Of right? course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Even Microsoft, be, screw that. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine? I know. <laughs> We're going to release it today with Windows 8. Wait, what? And you can upgrade it later. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, yeah, that'll be good too. Uh, good, 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 good. I'm excited. Can't wait to buy them. <laughs> and there are, and we have seen at IFA, haven't they, have we not new uh, eight yeah. one stuff, right? Yeah. By the way, what's the schedule? In it? Can we expect more IFA revelations? I think over that's the course it on IFA. <laughs> what about HP? Did they do anything? They're they're I not thought, on the I list thought, here. I saw something because right, I have I have some I have a lot of information about devices that are coming this fall, and I I not all of it has dropped. You know, been revealed. <laughs> this uh, oh maybe okay. this IFA so, is a. Is really a mobile devices show primarily, so it would be phones, tablets. I don't know if you did. Yeah. Maybe you would announce. It's you know, I mean, well, maybe okay. So many laptops. tablets, and I think a lot of these hybrid devices are being yeah announced. You know, this week, for example, the I think the the big one so far has been that eight inch Toshiba, right? Which I think was the one that was codenamed Malta. It's an eight inch device, uh, Bay Trail. Yeah, that was hours. announced today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, technically, Ifa goes through the eleventh, so. You could uh, have more. Oh, really? Yeah. So you have oh, a, another week of crap. Oh, good. <laughs> it's like Christmas every day. But I feel like, like all. I feel like people will announce at the beginning of IFA, not at the end of IFA. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll hear, about the, we'll hear about a Nokia device on day ten. Nokia. <laughs> no, from Nokia. <laughs> I still uh, have a prototype from 2002 that I've decided to put into production. <laughs> So uh, new new yogas from Lenovo. I like the yeah. yoga a lot. I do too. Yeah, I do too. And those guys, you know, they put out an 11 inch yoga last year at the launch uh, that was RT, and they put out a 13 inch version that was Windows 8. And I remember thinking, man, if this 11 inch version was just uh, uh, say, this would be amazing. And of course, they've done that, and uh, now there's a second gen version of it available. You know, as of I don't know when they actually ship it, but that they announced this week, and those look really nice. Sony had its press conference today, and I think they announced new laptops, yeah? Yeah. Yep. The new Vios. The Vio right? Tap. Tippity Tap. Tippity Tap. The, the Flip and the, the Tap. The one. Yeah. Flip I it. love these names. Like, Lenovo yeah. has Flicks, Flick, or Flick, 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 Mix, Flick. and Yoga. Hey, we complained so long and hard about numbers for names. Know. You know, the new Sony Vio 3742FPZ. That I think well, by they, the way, that's, that they that's actually one problem with the Lumias, right? They all have these crazy yeah, numbers. Right. It's numbers like numbers are not good. 600, 625, 710, 725. But how about yeah. those new Zen books from Asus? Love Asus stuff as well. Those. Yeah. So I, I, I have the, the UX. second gen Zen book, right? The 13 inch. Yeah. It's got that kind of metallic swirly effect Love on the that. outside. That yeah. With. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. I think the I think the uh Samsung's have kind of overtaken them as the go to mainstream awesome you know ultrabook and uh but they're yeah i mean those are nice i would get a samsung over an, an asus personally but um, would you i have my yeah. asus still the the one i've been running for three years ul38 yeah. uh that's like Windows a pre 7. not quite an ultrabook though right like no um, but it's, it's so really awesome and it's still light. kicking yeah. it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no i still have my asus too actually but um i did last year well samsung makes a 15 inch version of the of their ultrabook, which means it's technically not an ultrabook, yeah. I guess, but right. uh, I love that thing. And uh, my wife uses the 13 inch version of that, which is also really nice. And now they have new, you know, obviously new versions this year. The new one, the Zenbook UX301 is the one with the uh, Gorilla Glass lid. Have you seen that one? Yeah, the, the outside, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. HP but, has put yeah, the elites had glass lids. Yeah. I think that's risky. Yeah. I know. It yeah, it's not put glass more right? places. That's, than that's we really right. Need. That's what I was thinking. So the point of an ultra book is you want thin light, portable, yeah. and yeah. so you put glass on the outside. And I don't understand. Like it's can't. It's glass, so it's not protecting anything, yeah. and it's adding weight and thickness. You know why? I, I don't quite get the point of that. Like it, it must just look nice. It must be a. It's pretty. That's what the designer. HPs. You know, they're, they're pretty. But I, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure it's a good idea. Yeah, HP has. Um, Stevie Mac Jr. says HP just announced the HP Recline touchscreen all in one. Yeah, you seen this one? Ooh. Yeah, I just started looking so you, at this. You kind of take the screen and pull it down yeah. over the lip of the desk, and then you can play it like a piano or whatever, and you can touch it. <laughs> Um, Whatever happened to just plain old laptops, people? Could we just have like a normal? <laughs> I really, right. I, I want a regular old laptop. Not not these weird like yoga, blah, hybrid. I just want a clamshell laptop that has a really awesome keyboard. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Granted, uh, Mary Jo is someone who prefers to write in notepad. Yeah. So I'm not really, uh, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> you know. an audience of one. No, but I'm sure there are other people like me out there who want this. <laughs> Does well, no, I, use, make, I use a non a non touch uh, ultrabook still. Does Vizio I mean, still make uh, yep. stuff? They had some they nice do, looking right? ultrabooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and all in ones too. Actually, yep. touch yep. based. Yep. Yep. We should note on all these machines the one statistic that well, there's two things we don't know: price on many of them and battery life on most of them. I so, wish they'd say that. I don't understand. Yeah. We'll give you one little detail though. That Toshiba, which looks interesting. I mean, I. Of course, the Acer W3 looked interesting, and then you actually saw it and you wanted to yeah, smash it. Um, the original plan for that device was for it to uh, retail at 279 which would have made it the cheapest wow. Windows uh, tablet by far. That's a great price. And uh, I think. Um, but actually, the starting price is not three is not 279 I think it's 329 hmm. So something yeah. changed, and I wonder... What that might be, <laughs> you know, was there? I don't yeah. know. I, you know, I don't know if it's other devices were a little higher in price and they felt like they could do that, or yeah, you know. maybe they just were lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it was just a plan. Actually, okay, I do see. Yeah, there's another another tablet may come in as low as two forty nine, uh, but I guess it depends on how that stuff goes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then you know, chat room saying the AT Book Nine Plus, you know, which that's is a, that's nice. A nice yep. one. And um, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, the X1 Carbon, right? Love the know. X1 yep. Carbon. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. the, that's that's by the way, that's and, the creme de la creme. And that's yeah. the one Mary Jo should consider. You think I should get that one? Yeah, you yeah, really because should. because it comes in a non-touch version. And, it, yeah. yeah, you can get the Carbon or Carbon Touch, and it has great yeah. keyboard. Lenovo's just does great stuff. I know. I love Lenovo. And I love the little light. track so button. Killer. You like the nipple? Of course. Who doesn't? No, but it's, by the way, that thing is so much more precise than a trackpad. It is. I, I, love I, I love that thing yeah. too, and that's the, by the way, that's the thing I miss the most with the Samsung is mm -hmm. I don't have that. I I have to bring a mouse. Well, then, like Mary Jo, you got to get the X1 Touch. I mean, Carbon, not the Touch. You yeah. know what I wish though? I wish that machine looked cooler. It's industrial <laughs> looking. It's industrial looking. Yeah, I mean, look, it looks it looks like Darth Vader's Tie Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's just you know, think of it. You know, it's a it's like an Ann Rand have it in purple designed or something? purple. Something. For right. Uh, uh, yeah. It, actually, sometimes uh, Lenovo will offer ThinkPads with a red. Yeah. You know, uh, lid. Oh. Yep. But Get I don't know one. if they do it for. I don't know if they do it. Call for them up. Say, Mr. Hey, Lenovo, well, would you just make call. one for me? I'm Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> I don't think there is a Mr. Lenovo. <laughs> Mrs. Lenovo. I am calling for Bob Lenovo. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was French. They didn't know. They're Chinese. What do they know? Um. Okay. So Samsung's got a watch. Pretty much everybody and their brother has a watch. Microsoft started this whole thing with a spot watch way back when. Yep. Where's the Microsoft watch? No, oh, it will come two years from now, Leo. <laughs> it'll the, be a, and it'll be this big. The size of a it'll Volkswagen. Be, it'll be the table. <laughs> it is rumored to still be in development. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, last time, last thing I think any of us heard or anybody wrote about it was saying it would be out in 2014. Oh. Um, can I go out on a limb here and just say, hey, Microsoft, you might want to think of, you know, stop, forget the watch. There, you got bigger fish to fry. I know. A watch, no. It's not about, it's not they're going to the do watch. one, though. They're, they're, I'm positive they're going to do Such one. Such a Me Too product. Come on. Right. 
but yeah. but everybody else has one, right? And the one the one characteristic that was rumored about the Microsoft Watch, which was which might have made it more interesting, and if it does happen, will make it more interesting, is it's not tied to the smartphone like the like the right. one announced this week. You know, that you actually will be working with the cloud more with the Microsoft One, and it won't yeah. be like you have to have a Windows phone to use this. It'll watch. be cool. You hold it up to the screen, and the screen flashes and programs it. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I love watches. I wear a watch. I actually use a watch to tell time. How retro of me. But I don't know if I want one of those kind of watches. Like, I thought the, I thought the Samsung one was hideous. Did you? Or did you it's, like it? I think it looks terrible. It's it looks hideous. like that Microsoft it's watch. It's hideous, the right? Ago. It also Does looks like look? something that you don't... Oh, I just asked my phone what time it is and it's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, to me, that's the way it should be. Um, it, yeah, the Microsoft, well, also it's for righties because the camera's on this side, and I like to put my watch on my left hand, which means I'd be taking a picture of my face. Um, well, that's just a real early prototype thing too, right? Is, is it? That? That's not the I mean, for Microsoft, Microsoft's one. Oh, no, I was talking about the Samsung crap. Oh, Samsung, yeah. Tied to Samsung's Galaxy Note 3. Right. Although I think that's merely uh, the fact that it needs Bluetooth LE, the uh, low-power Bluetooth, and it needs... Uh, uh, Jelly Bean uh, 4.3, and so as soon as they get all their other, because you you have LE on uh, the S4, so just I can't it. believe we're even having this conversation. It's like it has a certain version of Android on it, and I it know, has, you know it's I like know, God, who cares? It's like this I stuff know. is so. I'm not a believer I, in watches in general. I I like the I like the the notion of wearable computing makes a lot of sense to me. I just don't know what you're wearing. It's good, but it's I think it's one of those things that maybe falls apart in the real world That's like what, so far. Even Microsoft's yeah. original vision for that smartwatch made plenty of sense, you know. Right. This kind of glanceable information. Right. Uh, I remember they had all these great uh, um, scenarios. You you're a sports fan and you're at the uh, football game. Right. You get and of course you care about the other football games. Right. And so you could bring up your wrist, and it would know it was you. Right. It would know you could see where you were, and it would know you were at a football game. So it would show you like football scores for teams that compete right. with yours in the same right. division. That makes plenty of sense, except that in real life now, there's a there's a two thousand foot screen that has this information on it <laughs> at the stadium at all times, <laughs> and it's like all of these scenarios kind of break down. Like I, it's it's uh, I had a Timex Data Link watch. Yeah, right, I remember 90s, that. Yeah. You used to have to hold it up in front You'd of your hold, screen. The screen would flash. We put that dizzying pattern on yeah. your screen. It only worked with CRT. That's why they went out of business. All the yeah, LCDs yeah, that, appeared that, and they couldn't make it work. Yes. Yeah. So, by the way, if someone wants that watch, it's at the bottom of the Salt River outside of Phoenix. <laughs> so, yeah. Fell off my wrist. Uh, you can, it's probably still there. Oh, man. Well, I guess the point to be made is that everything you would want to do with a watch has been done 10 years yeah. ago with Microsoft and Timex. And I look at the Pebble watch. It doesn't do anything new. I mean, it gives me alerts from my phone. I mean, I don't, I, I just, I'm not sure. But I because, by the way, what I need is another device in my office. It's beeping with and buzzing. With a freaking alarm on I know. it. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Half an hour before this podcast, Leo. <laughs> It is like a symphony in my office. Oh. Every device I own is like... <laughs> yeah, because I need that on my wrist. <laughs> that's that's where it's not. I know. It's not on my wrist. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I know. Uh, let's see. What else here? Video messaging comes to Skype and an update for Windows Phone 8. Yeah, it's about all we have to yeah, say. Yeah, okay, there you go. I'm just going to read the headlines. <laughs> News of the week. You tell me if the, any of it grabs you. The Motorola Microsoft patent case ends in victory. By the way, I do I do want to say one thing about that. What's that? Um, Motorola, being the, a part of Google, is trying was trying to soak Microsoft on licensing, right? right? They said that their standards essential patents were worth billions of dollars a year. I think the figure was $4 billion. The court determined that the actual value of those patents was between 1.3 and 1.8 million dollars per year, and that uh, Nokia was in fact acting in, I'm sorry, uh, Motorola was in fact acting in bad faith, and uh, they, uh, a jury awarded Microsoft uh, some tens of millions of dollars. 14 million. 14 million. Which is half okay. of what Microsoft wanted. So in court, yes. Google's appealing, uh, court, of course. Yeah. A lawyer for Motorola said that their original offer, which was that four billion dollar, they got so much they thought it was just a piece of paper. To which Microsoft's yeah. lawyer replied, "Yes, 
So is a ransom note. <laughs> that was good answer. That was good. <laughs> Which good I just answer. thought was a good one. And it was good a jury answer. trial, so that kind of thing really wins yeah, with yeah. a jury. Yeah. So. Yeah, but man, anyway, but that, that's a, like a good example years? of how. What's that? Hasn't this been going on for like three years? It was about oh, 8264, yeah. 80211 wireless. Yeah. Yep, yep. They were trying to hold them up over Xbox and Windows. Oh, they wanted I mean, to it, stop the sale, the, the uh, in, uh, importing. It, of Windows and Xbox, right? <laughs> you talk about going after the, you know, going for the gold on that one. And, you know, that's something you can't do with yeah. standards, essentials, patents, right? Um, but whatever. So it looks like it's going to work out in Microsoft's favor, at least this one. Where'd you get this Although, picture of the young lady with the tablet saying 110 million? That's not I stock oh, I photo. Made that, oh. You made that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it. She's holding a surface. That must have been the hardest part about finding that picture. So I'm, ama I, I'm amazed I don't get more pushback over any time I use a number because I am the dumbest person on earth when it comes to math. And that 110 million figure is a number that I created using data from other places. That's you? You came up with that? Yeah. I mean, it's math that anyone could do. I'm just saying, I'm sort of surprised someone didn't do the math and said, hey, Paul, um, Actually, it's 11 million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, well, actually, actually, I wrote the notes. It was 110, yeah. actually. Yeah. I know. I know. When I read the notes, I thought, boy, I don't know if this is something to trumpet, really. <laughs> Let me. 110, yeah. million, 110 users. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the entire installed base of OS X, just to put this in perspective, is 72 million. Mm -hmm. According uh, to Apple. According to Apple. Yep. That one's not done uh, by Paul's math. No. So, uh, I mean, but nobody's ever said that Microsoft doesn't have a dominant position in operating systems. Well, right. But this is, you know, the the OS that no one wants, I guess. And it's during one of the worst years, it, you know, the PC's ever experienced right, as far as year-over-year right. -year sales decline. Um, still, and I, I just think it's, it's helpful to put that in perspective. Yeah. That's all. No, I agree 100%. The one thing I would say is that that... I'm sorry. I was just going to say, don't forget that part of the reason this number went up so suddenly, net, net, yes. ap net applications number, is because they changed the way they calculate the number, too. That's but right. But it actually yep. is, it's a change that actually makes many people accurate. believe makes it more accurate and more fair because it has to do with um, hidden pages by browser. So it, they, oh, they made a bunch of adjustments. That's, that's a good way to do it, actually. Yep. So, yeah, that's, that's also part of the reason it jumped so suddenly, like you're saying, Paul, in, in a month uh, when it didn't look like things were going so well for Windows 8, they went up from 5.42% to 7.65%. Wow. Right. So, so, I mean, at, at some point, sometime, Microsoft will eventually have to make some other announcement about license sales for Windows 8. Yeah. It's kind of amazing they haven't done that. But, mm -hmm. you know, they made the 100 million announcement back in, what, May, maybe? Um, it's been a long time. They have not really addressed this. And so that number, whenever it comes out, you have to think, if it was May, we got June, July, August, you know, September, let's say, is four months. 15 million a month is 60 million. Look at me doing math. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, it's 160 <laughs> million licenses sold, which leaves a gap of like 50 million, <laughs> you know, and of course, th th those kinds of things always raise questions, uh, as they should. And I think that represents the number of people, probably corporate users largely, who are, in fact, still downgrading, as they always do. Right. In this case, to Windows 7. Windows phone usage also surging across surging. Europe and Mexico. Surging. Yeah. Like a tidal well, by wave. The way, so in Mexico, Windows phone is now the number two smartphone platform. And uh, I think it was, what's the name of this company? Cantar or something. Um, they they said that this is the first time Windows Phone has ever been number two in a major you know in a major market like one of the top markets. And the other interesting statistic here is that one phone, which is that Lumia 520 I keep talking about, that one you can buy here in the United States for ninety nine dollars, no contract. It's an amazing. Just if you just use it as a second phone, as a non phone, just as like a media device, like an iPod Touch type device. 99 bucks now represents 10% of all smartphone sales in Britain, France, Germany, and Mexico. That's excellent. So it not, it's not Windows Phone that has 10%. It's one Windows Phone that's amazing. model. That is, wow. That's actually really amazing. 
That is. I think it's in the really? U.S. only that the iPhone has all this mind share, uh, and so yeah, yeah, it's really about. Well, by the way, so the the you know for all this, so there's a lot of good news here for Windows Phone. Uh, some of the bad news is uh, Windows Phone has not done anywhere as well as this in the U.S. Uh, right. Slow growth in the U.S. three to three point five percent according to this company. Um, iOS obviously grew very big. I. Android actually declined in the United States, according to this company. But in China, which is maybe the, I think right now it's number two, but soon will be the number one smartphone uh, market. Windows Phone actually lost market share hmm. in the most recent quarter, uh, dropping from 2.2 to 1.6%. Um, that's not what you want to see. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's, that is a problem. Um, I feel like Windows Phone could do be very successful and never have great market share in the United States, but I don't feel like you can lose both the uh, U.S. and China and, um, mm. and have that make sense. All right, tell you what, let's take a break and come back. We've got picks, we've got enterprise code names, we've got beer, we've got everything that you've been waiting for. The back of the book coming up in just a moment, but first a word <laughs> from audible.com. It really is, the, but my favorite part was yeah, always no, the, back like, the, like the back of the book. I like the back of the book. I always flip to the back of Shopper, InfoWorld, whatever <laughs> I was reading, PC Magazine. Uh, our show today brought to you by audible.com, the place to go for audiobooks, the number one marketplace in the world, I'd be willing to venture with 150,000 titles, you're sure to find something that you want to listen to at audible.com. Audible brought reading back into my life. And I say reading because, you know, I love books. I always loved books, but I never had time after I got into uh, the real world between <laughs> commutes, work, you know, the kids. I couldn't, I couldn't read anymore. Fortunately, Audible came along right around the year 2000, and I, I've been a member since they started, and I just love them, and I've read over 500 books. I say read again, but listened to 500 books. Look at this, The Lost Fleet. Oh, wow, on sale. This will get, get you listening to the Dauntless series by Jack Campbell. There's great science fiction, really great science fiction uh, on audible.com, but that's not all. There's also a great uh, nonfiction this is an interesting. David Shields has just uh, put out his book on uh, on Pierre Salinger, Kennedy's uh, press secretary, and a very interesting guy. No, not not Pierre Salinger, J.D. Salinger, another interesting guy. This is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just looked. You're not the oh, guy no. in the Celtics whose last name is almost exactly uh, J. Ca Salinger. Catcher in the Rye guy. This is this. I cannot wait to read this. I was reading an excerpt the other day. Um, J.D. Salinger who wrote Catcher in the Rye, partly while he was uh, uh, in the service during World War II, hated the book. It changed his life. He became a recluse in New Hampshire. Uh, this is a, a work of a really great scholarship and apparently fascinating. But what I, the part I read was great. Uh, so if you've been into, if you read, as many of us did as teenagers, Catcher in the Rye, we're deeply moved um, and changed our lives in some ways. That's huge, huge with serial killers. Re who? Catcher in the Rye, it, it, this figures prominently in a lot of the... You're kidding. Syria, no, no you're that. kidding. Wow. No, have you no. uh, have you been reading, watching Orange is the New Black? You can read the original. Not yet. I, Pi yeah, great I book. I mean, a uh, great show and a great book, too, Piper Kerman. Uh, Red Shirts, John Scalzi's a novel, just won the Hugo Award, best uh, science fiction of the year. Will Wheaton narrates it. Look, I think I, you're getting some idea. There's some great stuff on audible.com, 150,000 audio books. Pick one, you get it for free. Paul, you got a pick for us? Something you're listening to these days? Yeah, um, I read this book years ago, but um, Stephen King has obviously many books full of uh, short stories, and then he has books full of long stories. So uh, Different Seasons is kind of the classic there. I think every, uh, yeah, every one of the stories in that book, and there are only four, have been turned into movies once, one of them twice. Um, full Dark, No Stars is more recent. It, not, I think it's some years, it's probably 10 years old or something, but... Uh, it is also a collection of four stories. I've only I've read I've read it in the past. Uh, listening to it on Audible, I've just finished the first one, which is called 1922, which is kind of an excellent turn of the century uh, ghost story uh, from the middle of the country kind of thing. But I actually um, I walk every day to listen to books. And last night after dinner, I asked my wife if she would drive me 
to the other end of town so I could walk back and finish the story because I was like so close and I'm like I just got I want to finish this. I love know? that feeling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and it's a this is a great one. Um, How many times have I sat in the driveway with a car running? Listening? Yeah, I do the same. Yeah, I walk home and I sit on the front yeah, steps just yeah. to get through. It's great. The, yeah. yep, yep, it's great. A little a little special time listening to great books. Stephen King. They've got thrillers. They've got uh, nonfiction, too. Paul and I love uh, mm -hmm. reading history on audible.com. Here's the deal. If you go to audible.com slash windows, you'll be signing up for the gold account. That's the book a month account. Uh, but the first 30 days, you pay nothing. That first book is free and yours to keep. Um, I think you're going to want to stick around, though. I really, I just, I listen to Audible all the time. I yep. feel like it's my, it's, you know, it's my go-to place. Whenever I get a chance, I'm I'm reading a really deep book about psychoanalysis called The Denial of Death. I don't really recommend it. Actually, I do. It's great, but <laughs> Jeez. but it's probably not exactly an upbeat an right. upbeat book. You might want to read the Jack Reacher novels instead. Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World. Isn't that you know the movie Fifty Shades of Grey is coming soon? You might want to get reading if you want to have all three volumes under your belt. It's on my calendar. <laughs> Mm. Audible.com <laughs> slash Windows. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Uh, we thank him for their support of Windows Weekly. Let's start with Paul Therod and his pick of the week or his tip of the week. Yeah, I don't just have one tip this uh, pick, I should say, this week because there's been a lot of apps updated that are important. And so uh, Skype was updated for Windows Phone 8. If you're using Skype on Windows Phone 8, if you're not using it yet, uh, this update adds the video that's messaging cool. feature that has been around on, on other platforms that's already. Cool. So that's a cool feature. Um, Nokia Music was updated this past week, and that's a, a service I use. It's a really inexpensive alternative to, you know, Pandora, uh, Spotify. For three ninety nine a month, you get uh, offline capabilities, uh, multiple devices. It works across Windows Phone, Windows Eight, Windows RT. Uh, and the new version of the app uh, lets you favorite artists, and then. Also get notifications for when artists are going to have a gig locally in your area. You can get a notification for that. So that's a that's a great app that's only getting better. Um, Halo Spartan Assault, that awesome game that came out on Windows 8 RT and Windows Phone 8 uh, last month or in July maybe, has been updated for a second time. And this one has, uh, I think this is the update added uh, additional levels and all that. But they didn't announce this at the time, but it also added uh, support for the Xbox controller on Windows 8 and RT. And so I verified this the other day that if you, you know, they have different adapters. You can use an Xbox controller with your PC. I, I happen to have the wireless adapter. Um, but once you, once you have that enabled on your PC and you run the game, you can change the control system from, you know, they have touch, they have keyboard and mouse, and now they have controller. And that's a, you know, if you're used to Xbox type gaming, that's actually a great way to play this game. And so there's a, and plus you can play it on a real PC, right? Which makes sense. I don't think most keyboard is great on a big screen with a real PC, but... Xbox control is really good. Um, I don't follow how this stuff works on iOS and Android, but Doodle Jump. I feel like I'm saying that name wrong. Doodle. No, Doodle Jump. Doodle. Yeah, there's a whole series of those, but Doodle Jump is the... Yeah, so the version on Windows Phone was recently updated, and it gives you the... It gives you, like, all these different worlds. And so there's, like, a... Or different... I should, they're not worlds. They're, um, like, skins almost. So it can look like Halloween, or it can look like winter, and it can look like... You know, it has all these different... Kind of themes. This is something that probably came out on iOS two years ago. For all I know, I have no idea. But uh, if you have the game, it's a free update, and it's it's kind of fun. You know, if you if you get tired of that kind of stock, you know, Doodle Jump, where it literally looks like a paper doodle, you can make it look beautiful. I mean, it's really some really nice looks to it. And then uh, this isn't a free update or an update of any kind, but there's a new version of Temple Run, which again is probably not only new to Windows Phone, but uh, since the game probably came out three years ago. But uh, Temple Run Oz, which I guess was tied to that Oz movie is 99 cents. But if you're looking, you know, when you think about games, you're going to play in little bursts and, you know, you're standing in line. At the is it The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, it's tied, well, it's tied to the, you know, the Oz sequel before. that came out. Yeah, the James it's Franco. It's a really good one. It's, oh, yeah, it's really, this is, yeah. it's neat. Um, I also found looking this game up, because I do, I have it, but I went to find the link so I could put it in the show notes. And there's a, there was a really awful knockoff game on in the Windows Phone store that's called something like Oz Temple Run or it's oh, got a name that's almost and it's like terrible. some complete knockoff but yeah. Temple Run Oz is the real thing and uh it's it, it's inexpensive and it's just a it's just a great great game so uh 
a good choice anyway if you want an actual. Hey, pick. is Call of Duty out yet on uh, uh, iOS? The the game you were talking yes, about. Yes, and it. it's called. Oh, it's got a different Call name. of Duty Strike Something. Um, okay. And uh, God, it looks good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play it. Uh, I want to do Strike it for... Strike Team. Strike Team. I want to do it for uh, iPad the day, and I, I just didn't see it. All right, let me look for Okay, it. it's called Strike Team. Yeah, Strike uh, Team. Call of Duty Strike Team, yeah. Okay, oh yeah, it does look good. Ooh, okay, that's going to be my pick of the week. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Paul. Uh, your uh, tip of the week. Tip of the yeah. So uh, just a reminder that uh, a couple of months ago, Microsoft started a promotion for people who have Xbox Live Gold subscriptions, and it is part of this promotion. They're giving away two free games every month, but you have to go into the console, or I guess you could do it from the web too, and actually make the free purchase, you know, if you will, and then download it to your console to get it. And so uh, each month, I think it's been. July, August, now September. On the first of the month, one of the games becomes available, and then on the sixteenth of the month, the second one becomes available, and they're available. They're, you know, they're available during that two-week time frame. So this month's games are Magic 2013, which is one of those um, you know, like Magic the Gathering type card type games, which I never really got into, but I, I'm sure some people are into that. Became available on the first, but on September sixteenth is Rainbow Six Vegas, and this is a pretty old game. I want to say it came out in like two thousand four, two thousand. I'm sorry, no, that's not true. Two thousand six, two thousand seven, somewhere in that time frame. But um, this was a game, uh, one of the few games that kind of got me off Call of Duty for a while. It's a Call of Duty style game, but team based. Um, it has got uh, team based challenges you can do, and it's got multiplayer and all that kind of stuff. And pe people are still playing this thing online, and um, so even though it's kind of several years old. Uh, if you're into first-base shooters at all, or first-person shooters, I should say, uh, Rainbow Six Vegas is an awesome game. I'm actually looking forward to playing that one again. Classic. So just don't forget you can do that. Classic. Uh, all right. Time for you, uh, Mary Jo Foley, to give us an Enterprise Pick of the Week. Right. This all seems so long ago because of all the things that have been happening with Microsoft. But remember on September, when, or was it actually August, Microsoft just recently said... Um, Windows 8.1 was RTM, but nobody could get the bits till right. October 18th. Well, everyone assumed the same was going to be true of Visual Studio because that also is still just in customer preview. I had that guy sitting here across from me last week and going, I know, did. you should have grilled that guy. I, I was I know. being too kind. He must have but, known this. So here's, here's the new interesting wrinkle and why Visual Studio 2013 is my pick of the week. Uh, the release candidate of Visual Studio has leaked to the web. So there is going to be a build of Visual Studio mm -hmm. that comes out for developers mm -hmm. before October 18th, I would believe. It's going to be the RC. It's not the RTM we're talking about. But um, it's very interesting because a few developers um, who are handpicked by Microsoft, probably Facebook, probably a, a couple others, are, got the, are, are going to get the RTM bits of Windows 8.1. And I hear they are also going to get the Visual Studio 2013 release candidate. Everybody else who wants it, you have to go download it illegally right now because Microsoft hasn't released it. But I think they're probably going to release it um, sometime in the next couple weeks. That would be Neat. my guess. Yeah. So if you're somebody who's developing an app or who just likes to tinker with Visual Studio, uh, you can find those bits out there. And the .NET 4.5.1 build as well, I think, the RC of that. Very cool. And uh, the code name pick of the week reminds me yeah, of the baking. <laughs> the code name pick of the week this week is coming from these reports we've talked about a couple times on the show where um, – I believe it's Microsoft probably who gave this to the New York Times and All Things D. But they gave them, and also Reuters, they gave them the code name of what this whole Microsoft-Nokia partnership was. And the, and the code name was called Project Gold Medal. That was the secret code name for the deal coming down between the two. And here's the even more fun part of this. So in, in Project Gold Medal, Microsoft's code name for itself was Edwin Moses, <laughs> the American. American track and field athlete. Won a gold won medal. gold medals. Yeah, yeah. And Nokia's code name for itself was <laughs> Nermi. After Pavo Johannes Nermi, oh the nine time Not gold medal. The line of desks runner. from IKEA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Nermi yeah. line. His nickname was the Flying Finn. What year was that? <laughs> I don't know. But that 
I don't know what years those were, but uh, those were the, all the different code names they used, which is kind of fun, like a fun fact, right? Like, that's why nobody found out about these things, because they were using all these weird code names. He, he must have been one of those guys that, like, skied, shot a gun, and then <laughs> snowshoed across 24 yeah. miles of yeah. you know, wilderness or something. It's like 1938. Right. It's not, uh, yeah. let's see, no. he died in 1973. So, uh... It, Who, the flying fin? The flying, there were several, it turns out, <laughs> flying <laughs> fins, but... Pavo Numi, or Nermi. When is, I mean, look how skinny he is. That's he could fly because he weighed three pounds. <laughs> there he is. Oh my god, that's an interesting code name. Yes, yes. I like all those code I names. Like They're those. pretty fun. I like them. Fun Project ones. Gold Medal with Edwin Moses, who's more recent. Wasn't he one of the athletes who uh, raised the Black Power uh, fist? I'm trying to remember. Oh, was Edwin he? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Could be. Uh, beer. We can't go without beer. We need beer. Yeah. Give us beer. beer. So, you know, this was a long week for me and Paul. We came off the Labor Day weekend having to stay up and, like, get up. And I was up at 2 a.m. on uh, the night that the Microsoft Nokia news broke. So I was really ready for my beer the next, <clears throat> that night. <laughs> oh, my God. Luckily, at my local Rattle and Hum, they had Founders KBS, Ooh. which is the Kentucky breakfast stout. It's, like, one of the best Ooh. Founders beers ever. It's a imperial stout aged in oak bourbon barrels. And that sounds it tastes good. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart because it's like 11.2%. So I didn't have a ton of them. I would have just keeled over if I had. <laughs> wow. But the, it's really hard to get. Uh, but a few times a year, you see it show up in different beer markets. And if you ever get a chance to try Founders KBS um, from Founders Brewing in Michigan, it's one of the best. Uh, Imperial Stouts, delicious. They call it Kentucky Breakfast Stout because you could feel like you it's could hearty. drink that for it's, breakfast. It's hearty. <laughs> a very hearty. It's like oatmeal yes, it's stout. But beer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Oh, and I messed up my beer pick of the week last week. What? I've gotten a couple notes on that. So I, I was talking about Dieu de Ciel, remember? Right, right. And um, so you, both Unibrow and Dieu de Ciel are in Quebec, but they're two separate brewer breweries, oh. and I messed up their brews. So sorry, sorry, Canadians. They should be Mine's just happy good. you even mentioned them. Now, a lot of people like those. A lot of people like those beer picks because uh, Canada brews some really awesome beer. So sorry I messed that up. <laughs> well, there you go. There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Windows Weekly for the week of September 5th, 2013. The, the day Nokia fell. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Paul Thorat the is it. star is missing in this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Thorat is the uh, editor in chief of the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. And if you're a Windows phone of the 4.7%, the Windows phone book at windowsphonebook.com is free and available for your download. It's going to be big in Mexico, huge in <laughs> Poland. I'm going to have to do a Spanish version. <laughs> you should. That'll, that'll be something I can occupy the next year of my life. That's a good idea. Uh, you also can uh, find Mary Jo Foley at allaboutmicrosoft.com where she covers Microsoft, two of the best, really. And we're always uh, thrilled that you can uh, you do this show with us. We'll, we do it every Thursday, by the way, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. If you want to watch live, just tune to twit.tv any time of the day or night. And we've always got great programming. Thursdays is Windows Weekly. You can also visit us in studio. We have two very nice people visiting us. And to XWS, John's visiting from, where are you from, John? Uh, Central New York. Central New York, just up up the road a piece. Does he work on Visual Studio? Because I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy, he is never going to come back. <laughs> he was great. He was, the, this is last week, the, he's uh, on the engineering team for Visual Studio, and he was just, he, so we could would tell. You say he seemed relaxed? Yeah. Like he wasn't freaked by a schedule? No, he seemed like he was, uh, and he was nodding. He's just mm. chilling. Smiling? Was he smiling? Smiling. Not nervously, but just A little naturally. bit of a vacation going on, I'm yeah. thinking. Yep. I should have read the signs. Yep. And you are from? Tom from Kelowna, California. B.C. Oh, Kelowna, British Columbia. Yeah. Wow. So it's great to have you both in the studio. If you want to visit during the show you, or any of our shows, email tickets at twit.tv so we can make sure we put a chair out for you. We'll leave, we always leave the light on. Uh, you can also get this show after the fact, twit.tv slash WW, or wherever finer podcasts are aggregated and uh, distributed. 
via the internet. I hope you will do so. Please subscribe. That way you'll not miss an episode. Paul, Mary, Joe, have a great week. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Mm -hmm.